Five years ago, an organization that calls itself Scientology was incorporated for the first time in Canada. The letterhead refers to Scientology as a church. The founder has called it the world's largest mental health organization. The Minister of Health for the United Kingdom said in Parliament in 1968, and I quote, The government are satisfied, having reviewed all the available evidence, that Scientology is socially harmful. It alienates members of families from each other and attributes squalid and disgraceful motives to all who oppose it. Its authoritarian principles and practice are a potential menace to the personality and well-being of those so deluded as to become its followers. Above all, its methods can be a serious danger to the health of those who submit to them. Close quotes. The state of Victoria in Australia has passed a law making it a criminal offense for anyone to demand or receive payment for the pseudo-medical practice of Scientology. In Canada, Scientology now claims more than 50,000 members. The organization distributes press releases calling established means of treating mental health problems into disrepute. One such release states that, quote, mental health for the Canadian masses is being pushed by 40 Soviet butchers through the Canadian Mental Health Association. Obviously, the activities of this organization in Canada raise serious questions involving the public interest. Most importantly, should Scientology per be permitted to deal with the subject of mental health without being held responsible to any public agency, without being subject to regulation of any kind? These are the questions you may want to ask your MP after you have seen this W-5 investigation. The largest Scientology organization in Canada is located in Toronto, where it was registered as a non-profit corporation in 1967. Its purpose, according to its charter, is to propagate a religious faith known as Scientology. A sign in the window advertises a tract on mental health. Members invite people in the street to come in for free personality analysis. A W-5 researcher who took the test was then asked to sign up for an initial course costing $25. Later courses can come in packages that cost up to $3,000. The courses often include a process called auditing with a machine called an e-meter. A Scientology publication claims that such auditing may improve the subject's IQ. Scientology claims to help people achieve what is called a state of clear by erasing engrams or troublesome elements left over from earlier periods in this life and from past lives as well. One Canadian family invested almost $10,000 in Scientology courses. They experienced the full impact of the group's techniques and then requested refunds. Of their $10,000, they got $3,000 back. Everything that one reaches for in Scientology is always beyond you. And at each level that you're at, there is that fear factor that if I don't do this right, they won't let me have the next. I basically wanted to reconcile a uh, situation within my family uh, so that uh, my wife and I would have common objectives and as a result of that entered and uh, progressed along as far as I could. I signed what is uh, a contract, I signed a contract for a billion years, one billion years. Now, uh, I worked on the average approximately 16 hours per day seven days a week for nine dollars and sixty cents a week john mclean became part of the scientology sea organization or sea org and served aboard hubbard's ship I, I believed in scientology and in the truth that i saw therefore i was willing to do it right up until i actually made my final decision to leave this one billion year contract would appear to be, legally, an unconscionable document. The implication is that the signer will continue to serve the organization in future lives. Hubbard first came to public attention as a science fiction writer. Many of his policy directives and much of his philosophy seems to reflect that background. Hubbard himself claims to have ended his association with the world organization and has said that he is simply loafing aboard this ship. A measure of the organization's wealth is the fact that this converted cattle ship is just one of several Scientology yachts on station in various parts of the world. Little film is available of Hubbard himself. 
In 1967, a British television interviewer asked him to explain Scientology in layman's terms. I think that'd be a relatively easy idea because it's actually a subject which is designed for the layman. And if you couldn't explain it to the layman, you would have a very difficult time of it. The subject of name means skio, which means knowing how to know in the fullest sense of the word, ology, which is study of. So it is actually study of knowingness. That is what the word itself means. It increases one's knowingness. But if a man were totally aware of what was going on around him, he would find it relatively simple to handle any outnesses in that. The Scientology Sea Organization is, in Hubbard's words, a highly disciplined elite group and forms the vanguard of the Scientology movement. Its purpose is to lead the struggle Hubbard is waging to, quote, clear, unquote, the planet Earth before moving on to other planets. He issues policy directives, many of which are couched in quasi-military jargon. Great emphasis is placed on so-called ethics and discipline. The directives specify many crimes against Scientology. Crimes are punished by such penalties as placing a dirty gray rag on the left arm. Hubbard is regarded by his followers as a prophet, the man who invented something called Dianetics, and later Scientology itself. Hubbard has said Scientology is as important to mankind as the invention of the wheel and the arch. Devotion to the Scientology creed is costly. An individual can spend as much as $8,000 trying to reach the improved state known to Scientologists as CLEAR. These are just a few of the courses Scientology offers. Each course has a prerequisite, which also costs money. The church doesn't talk about fees, but states that payment for these courses is a donation to further the cause. W5 has been informed that the Toronto organization's gross income has fluctuated between a few thousand dollars and $25,000 a week. No one is certain just how much of the money goes to Hubbard's headquarters, but at least 10% is sent abroad as a kind of tithe, and more is paid out for books and other materials. An advertisement for the e-meter. Scientologists call it a confessional aid. The machine measures galvanic skin resistance. Now we're going to continue with the security check. Similar instruments are components in conventional lie detectors. The e-meter is vital to Scientology auditing. Have you ever been sexually unfaithful? No. Every auditor is urged to buy one. The margin of profit on this particular machine, which Scientology sold to one auditor for $150, would be about 300%. The procedure shown here is called a security check. Hubbard announced the abolition of this questionnaire in 1968. According to a policy put out by Ron Hubbard in 1968, it was abolished. It was mainly due to um, pressures, political pressures put on Scientology by the British government. There was a lot of public outcry against these security checks in England. H has it been used since 1968 in Canada, in this country? Yes. It just uh, came into use, came back into use in 1972 when, uh, well, in Canada, an executive in Scientology and myself were the first two individuals to uh, have the security check started on. And my mother and my wife and my father also had the security check. Could you, could you give me some more of the questions? Sure. Have you ever been a member of a communist party or any associated group? No. All right. Have you ever had any unkind thoughts about L. Ron Hubbard? No. For a Scientologist to have an unkind thought about L. Ron Hubbard would definitely be considered an outness, and the person having such a thought might be considered suppressive. Have you ever had any unkind thoughts about L. Ron Hubbard? No, not really. All right. Your needle's floating. And that's the end of the session. That's it. You can put the cans down. Now, you've had the machine apart. Barry Smith is a biomedical engineer who specializes in the design and manufacture of electronic equipment for use in the field of mental health. Mr. Smith dismantled the e-meter and reported that it was of a type used to measure galvanic skin resistance. He explained that the meter portion was technically sound. 
but that the tin can electrodes were ineffective. On the quality of the unit as a whole, he reported, The system as a whole, which includes the electrodes, is not a good system because the electrodes are subject to this tendency to rely heavily uh, on the pressure exerted on the tins to the point where the pressure will swamp out the galvanic response of the tissues in question. This book was published by Hubbard in 1968. It describes some of the Scientology ethics which applied at that time. Certain people could be declared enemies or suppressive persons, SP for short. This order, issued October 18, 1967, said that an enemy could be declared fair game. Note the bottom line. He could be tricked, sued, lied to, or destroyed. A year later, Hubbard sent out an amendment dated October 21, 1968. The amendment said, the practice of declaring people fair game will cease. Fair game will not appear on any Scientology order. It causes bad public relations. Then Hubbard adds, this new policy does not cancel any policy on the treatment or handling of a suppressive person. This Scientology order, number 887, was issued in Toronto. It ordered Nan McLean's expulsion from Scientology. The list of accusations covered ten points, including seeking to splinter off an area of Scientology, hiding data that was vital to prevent upsets, omissions requiring heavy interventions by seniors consuming their time and money, refusing to report, protecting a staff member guilty of a Scientology crime, and snarling about justice. Nan McLean was a true believer. She joined Scientology in a search for personal identification. She persuaded her family to join with her, and together they invested almost $10,000. These are some of the awards and certificates she received. She started as a student, eventually became a staff member, and achieved the distinction of being called a Hubbard Dianetic Counselor. Her daughter Susan was the only member of the family who didn't buy Scientology. I found that people in my own family were doing things that were totally against their character. They were. And they'll dispute it in, in the sense that they don't like to think that they were, their character was changed for the worse. They like to think that all of the change was for the better, but it wasn't. The McLeans are a middle-class family who live in the country north of Toronto. Eric, the father, is a former intelligence officer in the Royal Canadian Air Force. The family is liked and respected in the community. Various members of the family tell how their experience affected them. I enjoyed utilizing my power against others when someone was going to have a committee of evidence due to some crime that they had committed what I would do upon occasion uh, would be to just take the book volume one in the organizational executive course of Scientology and open it and just run down and write down on a committee of evidence the worst charges I could find just to basically catch the person in everything that was possible to catch him on, no matter how minute. And when I saw myself doing that, well, I had to, I had to stop it. On at least three occasions, I was asked for lists of the names of teachers within my area, and not only at my school, but also within the county. And uh, the object of Obtaining a list of names, presumably, was so that they could be flooded with literature and uh, contacted by the organization. That's one of the things that I refused to do. I felt that anything that I would do to help Scientology was right, regardless of how much it harmed other people. And from, like, the viewpoint of a public citizen and going against, even going against uh, the laws of the land, but if it helped Scientology, 
then I felt at that time that it was the right thing to do because I was so terribly caught up um, in the survival of Scientology and I was like actually a robot, a Scientologist robot. Those who get hooked on the pseudo-scientific mumbo-jumbo about thetans, engrams, hats, wogs, raw meat, suppressives, and all the rest find it difficult to break loose. The words and regulations of Ron Hubbard and his pervasive organization take a firm hold. Just Bruce and the rest of the family were expelled from Scientology, and I wasn't at that point because I was on a leave to handle some babysitting problems and stuff. And uh, what I would have had to do in order to remain in Scientology is disconnect from my husband. Disconnect? Split up. You know, I go my way, he goes his, because we don't agree. And in order to remain in Scientology, I would have had to leave Bruce, or Bruce left me, or however it worked. How do you know that? Because that's the policy. If you're connected to a person who is antagonistic to Scientology or says, you know, nasty things about Scientology to you, then it becomes a condition where you are go, go to ethics and you're told you have to disconnect from that person. My thoughts are that they're afraid to really admit that they got took. Completely took. <laughs> every single one of them That's has... That's not true. Every one of them has made a point of stating the fact that there was good in Scientology. And to me, that's just uh, a way of saying, well, I did get taken, but there was some good in it. And making oneself feel, to an extent, that you weren't duped, but you were duped, Mother. I was not duped, Susan. Mother, you were. Okay, you, I grant your beingness to think I was duped, but I know I wasn't. I know I have benefited. But, Mother, I... And any benefit I have had outweighs any detriment I have had. But, Mother, I saw you do things that were wrong, and when I told you that they were wrong, you justified it in the name of the organization, and I heard you say more than once that for the good of the org, you were going to do it. Okay, did I do it? Yes, and you know it's true because you've actually yes, broken down at times and admitted it. I know right, that's true. Susan. I will admit publicly, in front of everyone that watches the program, that I got taken. Totally. Okay. Right. I got taken. Good. I've got no qualms about admitting that. Okay. I'm John, an idiot for getting taken. John, yeah. did you get nothing good out of Scientology? Mother... No, it's not that I didn't get anything good out of Scientology. It is the fact that I cannot definitely say that I wouldn't have gotten the same, ga same gains out of some other experience. Right. Because well, I am still the same person that I was. So Good. You are. I'm not. Okay. I know I'm better. But, Mother, you mm -hmm. gained from every little bit of fanaticism that you ever had in your whole life. You gained from all the books you used as your Bible before Scientology came, to, came along. You gained some little iota of truth. Just as you gained from Scientology when it came along, because you have to gain with the things that you have to reach for. You have this need to gain something and to have something held up as, as all right and all powerful. I hold it there. Don't forget that. No one holds it there for me. Only I. Then in, in now, in saying that Scientology has ripped you, Mother, you've got to be able to admit to yourself it really did rip you. I'm sorry. I don't have to admit that it ripped me. I don't believe that it ripped me. I'm the only one in this whole room that doesn't believe it ripped me. And I really, really, really mean that. I don't agree with you. I don't agree with you either. Okay, fine, you don't have to. But I know. I find the longer that people are in Scientology, the um, stronger their absorption of L. Ron Hubbard's thoughts, words, and considerations, and that... Uh, um, retreat from these particular uh, feelings uh, is perhaps a very slow process, and this is why we have such a divergence of opinion amongst us. I can't believe I ate the whole thing. I got more out of confronting the fact that I got ripped than I ever did in all the sessions I ever had. I don't want to offend you, but Mother doesn't have any considerations on money. It, it doesn't mean anything to her. She'd spend it as soon as look at it. And, and I'd all, go without it if I didn't have it. All right, but in all honesty, to put out thousands of dollars 
for a service <laughs> for which you have no proof it's ever going to do anything. You take the word of a group of people that worship a man, just like any other man, and to take those people's word for it and shell out that kind of money just, just lays me. I received my bill <laughs> last week from the flagship Apollo, and I owe them $17,500. Bruce and Don owe them $9,300 total. What so that's $26,000, something like that, that we three owe Scientology. But the thing is, they um, could... That Scientology claims you owe them. That, oh, yes, claims. We'll never have to pay it. We never will pay it. All right, so long as that's established. You asked me earlier if I felt guilty. Okay to the degree that every one of my family feels that they personally have been ripped off. I feel guilty. One, two, three, four times guilty. But nobody's saying we blame you. No, I know you we're, don't. We're up against a situation where there... Me. It's the lies that we kept encountering all the time that uh, finally brought about the, the disaffection that grew and resulted in the eventual... Uh, problems that we ran into. Okay. I know that. I have that feeling, too. And to that degree, I, too, feel ripped off, if you like. But I don't have that sense of freedom at being ripped off that everybody else seems to have. Sense I have freedom? a sense of injustice. Nobody has a sense of freedom about being ripped off. No, no. You say you feel good when you, feel, when you say, I have been ripped off. Okay. I don't feel good when I say I have been ripped off because there is that sense of injustice and betrayal. Are you sure you don't You're feel like a sucker? No. No. Listen. Because I was sincere and still am. You still feel this idealistic sensation, this fanaticism about, quote, Scientology. Because I still see truth. Scientology does have a truth. It has the truth, as I see it. It's there, and I want it. There's a oh. lot of truth in the Bible. Everywhere no, in life. The... Everywhere in life. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, John's absolutely right. The Bible... If you look around the corner, you can find a speck of truth here and a speck of truth there. Yeah. Okay, fine. Now, Scientology's cheated me. Okay, I got ripped. Do you ever think that you might be quite mad? Oh, yes. The one man in the world who never believes he's mad is a madman. With me in the studio is Brian Levman, the president and assistant guardian of the Church of Scientology in Canada. Uh, Mr. Levman, before we begin, I'd like to reiterate the, the, the terms of your appearance here. It is not a a statement of reply. It's an interview. We don't have uh, equal time as yet in Canada, and I think in the context of the film we've just seen, maybe that's a pretty good thing. So I'd like to start by asking you uh, about your organization's interest in mental health. I gather that uh, this is a matter of great concern to the Church of Scientology. Is that true? Well, before we start, do you mind telling me how many people are watching the show? I have the faintest idea. I see. Well, I must congratulate you. You've done an excellent professional SCTV is known for a smear job on the church. There's been a lot of libelous statements made tonight. And I, I presume you're something basing... Libelous settled in courts. It's not a matter I of... I presume, point. well, I'm sure that uh, that will be mentioned as well, despite the fact that you may have got the people who appeared on the show to sign releases, releasing you from legal liabilities. If you think that uh, CTV well, is indeed we'll released, I'm sure we'll you're, you're, you're lawyers, very misguided. Uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to pursue let me, the, let the me church's interest in mental first health. First of all, I say... You did a a big report in mental health. Has that report been endorsed by any legitimate organization? Well, Mr. Gould, uh, I don't think we're here to discuss Scientology because nothing I've heard I'm here in to the first 20 minutes of the about, tape about Scientology. had anything to do with Scientology. I'd like to make an answer to the uh, spokesman, the McLeans, that spoke at the first part of the show. I'm not here to continue uh, a mudslinging campaign that has we're already not, been started we're not against the but church, Mr. Levman. We're, we're trying to seek the but truth. I would like to your say, church, I must say, has probably been the most uncooperative organization that uh, we've ever uh, tried to report on. To continue 
uh, I'm getting very much less than a quarter of the show to appear on the church on behalf of the Church of Scientology. To continue, I'd like to say that uh, Mr. Levman, you're here for an interview, not for a statement. Those are the terms. I think under we which you first of appearance. all should take a look at the credibility or lack of such of the people you've had come on and testify against us. Now you tell me, Mr. Gould, if an alcoholic comes on a show and tells you that you're an alcoholic or some such other thing, or if a drug addict tells you that you're a drug addict. I repeat to you, Mr. Levin, we, asked, we asked your organization for a number of interviews and we refused them. Now, I'd, I'd like to pursue some questions, and if, you're, if you refuse to answer the questions, then we can forget it. I'd like to ask you, for example, about handling illness in Scientology from the Hubbard Communications Office, St. Hill Manor, East Grimstead, Sussex, HCO, Bulletin, 16 August, etc., 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 well, I think Don't we're mistake that Dianetics can all by itself practically bring the dead to life to all intents and purposes, and it can be used all by itself. Mm -hmm. Is that a true statement of the uh, If uh, I may just uh, go back to something you said earlier about the church, you asking for the church several times to get interviews. And may I point out that that was conducted in a very unethical way by CTV. You sent undercover people into Mr. the church to harass us. Mr. Ledman, would you, would you care to uh, answer the question? Yes, I would. I, I'd would love you to answer, answer Would you question. answer that question? Uh, you're asking me, is it true that, that Christ raised the dead? Is that it? No, uh, well, maybe Christ did. Uh, you're you're, you're, you're saying that, that Dianetics has. I'm saying can. that Dianetics, as a science of the mind or the spirit, by alleviating spiritually caused ills, can handle a person's suffering if indeed they're spiritually caused. That is all that uh, so-called bulletin says. It says that handling, you're reading from. handling illness in Scientology. You're taking something out of context. I think well, what we're I'll dealing read with, the whole thing if that's really necessary. In communicating. I'll read the whole thing if that's necessary. Why don't we get down to because the real issue? Dianetics can't, uh, if, it, if it doesn't work, it says it can do it. When that doesn't work completely, then the Class 8 case supervisor and well trained psych Scientology auditors can step in. Why don't we get down to the real issue? That is, that uh, the church has a campaign going to uh, decry abuses in the field of mental health abuses like psychosurgery, involuntary sterilization that is going on now in Ontario, electric shock therapy, and matters like this. And some people don't like that for some reason or another. And as a result, the church has been attacked back. For example, I know that Mr. Katz of the Toronto Star tried to write an article, a bad article on us, but was not able to. He was a friend of Mr. Reed's, so presumably he put him on to Mr. Reed, who's an associate producer of this show and now you're trying to do this type of smear campaign on us. Now, what can I do? Deny the allegations you've made? Nine million Scientologists can deny the allegations you've made, but I notice you don't have even one on the show. Are there nine the purpose million? of this is to make are there the nine Yes, there are. The purpose of this is to make the church look bad. Why make it a joke? If, if CTV there are nine is million, being unethical, if unfair, there are nine and million, making a smear on a religion. If there are nine million... Why religion? pretend are you a to religion? make it accurate? Are you a religion? The church has never been called anything else but a religion. Do you you bring up, for example... Do you worship? Of course. You bring up, for example, the Victoria. To whom do you pray? The Victoria inquiry at the beginning of your show. To whom do you but pray? But you fail to mention that the Attorney General of Auster Australia, Senator Lionel Murphy, has officially exonerated Scientology from many charges and has officially recognized this as a religion. You know, Mr. Mr. You bring Ledman. up England, where the church was uh, so supposedly restricted from entering, but you refuse to mention, deliberately refuse to mention that in 1971 a report was issued by the church, uh, by, uh, pardon me, by the church as well as by the Home you know, Office, Mr. Levman, it's very, stating that it's all the charges you made against us were unconstitutional it's very and exonerating easy to state the church. a great number of things. In fact, one of your people stated to one of our researchers that a so-called report of yours in mental health institutions in Canada had been endorsed by the Manitoba government. No, we stated that I they bought, that was a they bought 100 copies of such. True statement to our researcher. We have a letter here from the Minister of Health and Social Development in Winnipeg who denies that completely. My department has not endorsed the report, signed by Rennie Tupin, the, the minister. My dear sir, what was stated was that the government of Manitoba purchased 100 copies of our report. If you want to see the invoice, you're quite entitled to see their order yes, invoice. Yes, he, he says they... they <laughs> and that's all that was stated he to says they did purchase. He says they did purchase it. The action did not and does not imply support of endorsement, goes on to explain. Uh, what are you, an a-religionist? -relig uh, on the contrary. Do you feel obligated to attack religion? On the contrary, religion? I, just, uh, I just wonder to make about a farce an organization. Out of I wonder about an organization that you, uh, but you don't know a thing about it. People you haven't shown any knowledge of about dollars it. into debt in the pursuit of two soup cans tied I to see. the end of a, of a meter. I see. Who encourages people? 
I'm afraid the people themselves, if they wish to donate money to the church, are quite entitled to it. If you don't like it, that, that's your business. But Brian take, Levman. But take a look at the field of psychiatry. People spend president, a lot more. assistant guardian, says he has a number of other titles for the Church of Scientology in Canada.